In Elm, adding annotations to our types is 100% optional. And even if we don't do it, we're still gonna get all the benefits of uh, having a, like a well-typed program. All right, so we don't have to type it if we don't want to, but there's a lot of reasons that we might want to type it. So uh, this is uh, what we were messing around with in the last section. I'm gonna delete this. Um, and we're just gonna start uh, with kind of a clean module here and talk about some of the things we were doing when we were making values. When I was saying uh, name equals Ryan, uh, and I imported, you know, this main module and I wanted to use that name value. Uh, what? Oh, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I think this has got an old name laying around here. All right, let's try that again. So <laughs> when I import main uh, and I say name, or sorry, name equals Ryan. Uh, when I run name, you're going to see that it's it's got this Ryan from up here because that was exposed. This name variable was exposed uh, from the main module. Um, so Ryan has type string, um, but this weird colon string thing that I was kind of referencing in some of the videos, but also told you, don't worry about it yet. We're going to start worrying about it now. This is a type annotation. Um, so what I can do Elm is I can use these type annotations to tell Elm, Hey, I expect name to be this certain data type. Uh, and so what that means is if I do one, two, three, um, I'm going to get a compiler error. Uh, letting me know uh, that something's wrong, something's not matching. So if I say name's a string and then I return a number, Elm's gonna uh, catch that for me and it's gonna um, make sure that uh, I take care of that. Um, so here it's you know even suggesting maybe you should use this built-in string dot from int function and that'll uh, give you you know a string. Uh, one, two, three is kind of a crazy name, but um, if I import that, uh, sure enough, uh, it, it does take that integer and convert it to a string. Um, so we can use uh, annotations to help make sense of our code. For literal values like this, um, where it's just something like Ryan, the string isn't that helpful because you can tell just by looking at it, it's a string. Um, but uh, when you have confusing things like add a b equals a plus b, uh, it can be helpful to just add what types you expect to come in uh, and come out. So let's let's start with double here. Let's do double. Double a number. That's going to be the number times two. So I'm doing this on two lines here. Uh, that's generally what you're going to see uh, with Elm code in the wild. Um, but what I'm doing with this is I'm saying double is going to take in an int and it's going to return an int. So when we annotate functions, we use arrows to separate arguments uh, from the outputs. Um, and if we have multiple, let me uh, let me actually move this into our math module and let's add some annotations uh, on some of these functions. So add is the name of the function. I'm gonna use a colon to say, I'm about to describe the type. And I'm gonna say, it's gonna take in an int, it's gonna take in another int, and then it's gonna return it. So um, in a lot of languages, you might be used to doing something like this. You're saying, you know, my arguments are over here, and then there's an arrow and my output is here. But we learned in the advanced, um, when we were uh, talking about how functions work in Elm, it's okay to just provide an int and return a function that's waiting for that next int. So that's a, that's an important distinction here. We're going to use arrows to separate inputs, just like we use arrows uh, to separate an input from an output. Um, so what would be the annotation for subtract? It would be the exact same thing. Um, so what that means is if I try to type in foo, uh, it's not going to work. Okay. So uh, if I tell people that are using this math module, hey, when you use subtract, you give me an int uh, and you give me another int and then I'm gonna return it, uh, Elm is gonna make sure that I'm actually returning an int, okay? It's not gonna make sure that the program works right, but it is gonna make sure that um, the shape of the data that I promised would come back is always gonna come back. And there's no way to like change that. There's no way to break it. Um, in some languages you have like an any keyword or you can say like, yeah, yeah, don't, don't check the types. Elm doesn't have that. Um, so you can always rely on every single function, every single value, everything in your program is going to return the thing that it promises, no exceptions. Um, and it's all possible um, with these optional type annotations. So even without it, um, Elm's gonna be able to infer that this is a number because it's a literal number. <laughs> and then it's it's actually not gonna know what A and B are because they're not used anywhere. Um, but that's what type annotations are for. And for the rest of the program, or rest of the, the series, I'm gonna be using annotations pretty heavily um, and when we get into making programs, um, I'm going to show you uh, 
how they help catch bugs. Um, uh, when you leave off annotations, uh, Elm has to kind of guess about which part of your program was the assumption that went wrong. Um, so I always add, add these annotations everywhere. Um, so that's called annotating values, that's annotating functions. Um, uh, let's talk about annotating type variables, right? Um, so let's go, let's hop over maybe to main and I'm gonna import colors, exposing color. And I have a list of colors that I wanna keep track of. Um, when I have a list, remember how it can be a list of ints or a list of strings, or it can be a list of like, you know, something else. Sometimes people use A to represent this. You can use any lowercase uh, variable here. Um, but if I'm annotating, uh, let's say numbers. If I'm annotating a list, uh, Elm is gonna make sure that uh, I'm dealing with, you know, the right annotations. So if this is a list of floats, um, what we're going to see is uh, an error message like this. Let's, uh, let's import this so we can see it in full color in the terminal here. So um, what's wrong with the code that we wrote on lines 8 through, eight through 10 here? Well, Elm is saying that we have a type mismatch. So something is off uh, with the body of the numbers definition. So I gave it a list where there's 1.5, 2, and 3, and it's saying the body is a list of floats but the annotation that we gave it said it can be anything. Uh, and so by using that lowercase uh, type variable, we're saying numbers can return a list of anything. So sometimes adding these annotations uh, can make uh, your program wrong. Numbers is not a list of anything. It's specifically a list of floats. So um, uh, by using the correct annotation here, that problem goes away. And what this does is it protects you from issues where you said you were gonna give back a list of strings and you didn't. Um, if you're using an empty list, uh, you can say it's a list of strings, you can say it's a list of ints, but here um, it's good to use a lowercase variable. Uh, so you can, you can say it's a list of anything, you can say it's a list of A, you can say banana. It doesn't matter what the, uh, what the variable name is here because it's lowercase, it's kind of just like flexible. Uh, just like normal variables, type variables are lowercase and that's just saying, hey, it's, it's flexible. You can use this with any other type of list, you know, if you're adding them together and concatenating them, that kind of thing. Um, so that's how you uh, use annotations with type variables. Um, those are those are important. Those keep coming up. So I just wanted to to cover that. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted um, to share is that when you're using let expressions, uh, let's go back to uh, let's go to the math module. When you're using um, let expressions, let's uh, make a calculate calculate stuff function where it takes in an integer and another integer and returns a new integer. Um, you can also annotate variables inside let expressions. So you can say, um, you know, the sum of a and b, I gotta make sure to add those there. Sum is an int, it's a plus b, and then we're gonna have the product is also an int, it's gonna be a times b, and maybe we wanna take the sum and add it to the product. Uh, maybe that's what our calculate stuff function does. The important thing is that you can use annotations inside let expressions. They're also optional, so you don't have to use them if you don't want to. All this code is gonna work the same. Um, I recommend anytime I'm working with Elm, I always add these annotations. Um, it especially helps when, I'm, uh, when I was learning because I was able to figure out like which part of my program is wrong. So let's take a look at this. With annotations, we can see that Ryan is not an int. And so the problem is here with Ryan. Uh, but if I get rid of this annotation, Elm is gonna think the problem's over here because it doesn't realize there's an issue until it's taking a string and trying to add it to a product. Um, so it, this you know, is all in one file, but you can imagine if you had an entire code base and you were using calculate stuff somewhere, and then you didn't use annotations, you might be getting a, a problem reported over in you know, the main file when really it was on like line 12 of colors. So I always use these annotations, uh, even though it's extra typing, uh, it does help me uh, communicate to the compiler exactly what my intentions are. And it gives it uh, the ability to give me really concise error messages uh, rather than having me kind of look all over the code base to see what's going on. So that's it, the, the, those are type annotations. Um, we're gonna dive into one more thing in the type section, 
uh, which is how we can use type aliases uh, to save us uh, some time and be able to uh, work with like records and stuff in a little bit easier of a way. So that's it. See you in the next one.